Hi everyone. Today I am making creamy meatballs from the Clean and Simple Reset book. It is such a delicious recipe. Um, I've never made it before, so we'll see how I go. Um, if you're in the Clean and Simple Reset, you definitely need to give this recipe a try. Waiting patiently, Wendy, we're here. We're here now, ready to go. All right, so first off, I need to make the meatballs. So what goes into the meatballs is the mint. Let's see if I can stand that up without it falling. <laughs> okay, so 50 grams of beef mint, uh, 500 grams of beef mint. We just get what we can get at the supermarket. This is grass fed because we just prefer it, but any will be fine. Half a cup of almond flour. One egg. Is anyone cooking along with me today? I wonder. It, you would only be able to if you were in the reset because you wouldn't have the recipe otherwise. And simple seasoning. One of the best things about the Clean and Simple Reset that everyone loves are these um, the spice mixes that Erica has created. We need one and a half teaspoons of that. Before I get in it with my hands, it's the easiest way to do it, is I'll give my hands a quick wash. Have we got any comments, Erica? Um, just everyone saying hi. Hey, Jules, Bronwyn, Chris, Wendy, Annette, Justin. Danny, hey Susan. We also both have our bone broth here. It's chicken. Um, we've been trying to have it every night, kind of with dinner or before before dinner. Just give this a mix up. And the aim we're aiming for about twenty eight meatballs. So I think we want them to be about a tablespoon size roughly did anyone say they're cooking along well no one rana bananas already cooked theirs right that's adriana <laughs> mon asks where your have butter will travel t-shirt is um look honestly it's all i've worn for about three weeks and i'm aware that it's on almost every video that i'm in over the next few weeks oh we've so. got dan from the uk is here oh, he's in the dan. reset <laughs> he only just woke up probably a bit early for meatballs mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's have a look hey kim how are you going glad you can't hear my daughter crying okay sorry <laughs> hope everything's okay there okay so <laughs> there's the mixture we'll go at making out Maybe not even a tablespoon size. I reckon I'm aiming for about that. What do you reckon? Does everyone yeah. think that looks like a good meatball size? There will be variations, I can tell you. I quite often roll the meatballs for our recipes and already they're different and there's only two of them. Danny's cooking the meatballs tomorrow night. Leanne's already made hers. So I realised I wanted to turn this on. The pan on before I started, put a little bit of oil in there. Because we're using kind of, is it cast iron or um, it's quite a heavy pan, so it takes a little while to heat up. That's probably not enough. Just a little bit of oil probably says to use something in particular, but I just went with the... Boost no. the yeah. All right, back to the meatballs. 
Mon bought all of the soups from Woolies from the video. Excellent. Hope you enjoy them. That, to me, ha was a really good video. Um, I was just surprised how many options there were. I wasn't Most of those, all of those there. options, as far as we're aware, are new. So um, it's really great to see cognac noodles being included as an option with that kind of thing. It is. I think we've got the light in the wrong spot today. I'm dark. You are dark. Yeah. Um, Mon, oh, so her, Kim's not cooking along. Bit early for you, Kim. <laughs> I think you're having them tonight, though, aren't you? Um, I'm on a bit of an angle here as well. Hey, Linda, how are you Come going? Come on the other side. Well, in there. No one is. It's all right. <laughs> What's everyone else having for dinner tonight? Love seeing everyone who's doing the reset, what they're cooking. It's been really good. So this, once the meatballs are cooked, is probably going to come together reasonably quickly, to be honest. Um, Did you put the cauliflower in? No. So the other thing we're cooking <laughs> is I've just, Erica has cut up some roasted cauliflower. This is what we'll have with it. Um, so I'm just going to pop that in the oven just to roast up while we're cooking the rest of it. Not very good at remembering all the steps either. Even though beforehand I'm like, at the start, put the roast to go away. <laughs> and, and it's sitting right there. And, and I still, turn the pan on. <laughs> I still can't remember all the steps. I will say there's like a lot going on for me while I'm actually. I'll just turn that. The light down there, I might have light you up a bit. All right, we nearly got our meatballs. Will we have 28? I don't think we're going to have 28, but it'll be what it is. Doesn't really matter. Okay, what's everyone having 20. for dinner? Um, Susan's having steak and roasted veg. We're having that tomorrow night, I think. Got steak on the menu this week. Oh, Alani's already eaten her meatballs. Oh, nice. I thought you were cooking along, Alani. You just went <laughs> she, right ahead. She was too hungry. That was Dan when she got home from work. I'm oh, hungry I'm today. Last. I am definitely hungry today. Mon's having salmon and veggies. Justin's having soup with chicken. Yum. Annette's having chicken fajita patties because you haven't made them before. Oh, I like those ones. I hope you enjoy them. They're on our list. Yeah. Um, I might even make them on the live one night because they're great. The other thing I wanted to say is if you're not a massive fan of beef, you could really kind of change out the the meat, couldn't you? Like pork. Yeah, oh, yeah. You could do a beef and pork combo. You could do um, chicken. I know there's someone, I think it's Danny in the reset that doesn't eat red meat, so you could use chicken mince if you wanted to. Um, let's check the pan. No, I want that a bit hotter. I might just. You can put it up and then put it down. It's locked now because we have the. <laughs> I did wonder why it um, beeped earlier. Um so, yes, what else have we got? Sorry, I'll just come around here and steak, mushroom and cream, creamy sauce and veg Chris is having. Um, Suzanne, I will make this for the first time this week. Tonight I'm out for Greek. Um, oh, God. Wendy said, Dan, have you ever thought of doing a dial of dinner? You have the meatball making down pat. I am generally the meatball maker around here. Erica doesn't like getting her hands dirty, <laughs> I will say. Um, just with raw meat. Justin said, God for, a question, the Godfather Snacks from Woolworths does little cheese. Does that matter? Probably for the reset, Justin, it does. Um, you want to just avoid the dairy as much as you can. So, um yeah, just while the reset is on, sausages is really difficult. Mm -hmm. I'll come back around here. Sausages is really difficult to incorporate 
into, you made me really dark now. Yeah, I'm trying to make it better. Um, <laughs> because of all the bits and pieces that come into it. Don't I know, it's just not the best today. I don't know why. Because we changed the setup because you've been on the, the thermo setup. mix before. <laughs> so, yes, Justin, I'm not sure that I would include those in the reset. Um, Olivia said, have you decided yet about going to make the smoky cauliflower? I haven't decided yet, but going to make the cauliflower soup in the slow cooker. Yum. Trish had curried sausages. Oh, Is that better? A little bit. <laughs> um, Heidi, hello to you both. Those season mixes are beautiful. Just one question, please. The sesame magic mix. Sorry, I pushed the wrong button, but my question was, do we have to grind the sesame magic mix? No. No. Nah. It's like a topping. It's kind of like the everything but the bagel seasoning. Is that right, Erica? Yeah, so it's not so you don't really maybe use it in I don't know. Like you, we sprinkle it on things like we, we put it on eggs. Or and... we'll sprinkle it on salads yeah. or we'll sprinkle it on eggs. It's kind of like a nice little tasty topping. So I'm going into the pan with the meatballs now. They're sizzling away, so that's what I want. Not sure if the light's any better, but <laughs> we'll see. I'm potentially going to do the wrong thing and try and get them all in the pan at once. Well, they should fit. Is there a light? Actually, there's a light above you. No, nah, it doesn't work. No. You don't believe me? It does not work. Since we came back, it hasn't worked. Okay. How does everyone think I'll go tonight? I'm interested. Um, you, you, seem, seem, you seem very confident. This seems the last, uh, simple. <laughs> I mean, will I regret? You can't really mess it up. Will I regret saying that? Sorry, I need to come close to the camera to read the. Um, Seems to be jumping all over the place. Yeah, it does. Um, oh, Fiona had leftover fathead pizza. Nice. Um, Manda's having problems. We can see you, Manda. Um, I can see you anyway. Um, Jen said this looks exciting. Mon also bought the avocado oil for the first time. Nice. Hi, Hi Matt. Matt. You haven't missed much. I haven't stuffed up, although I did forget to put the cauliflower into the oven, so we're just roasting some cauliflower. That's gone in. Um, I've made the meatballs for the creamy meatballs, and they are cooking now. I'm just going to turn that down a bit. I don't want them to burn. <laughs> yeah, so Heidi, no, you don't need to grind the sesame magic. It's like whole sesame seeds and sea salt flakes. Sorry, I can't seem to not be on the camera in this angle. We need a light, but I know, Justin, we need like a full, you know, um, stage, kitchen stage, not our tiny little kitchen. Oh <laughs> so cooking the meatballs is going to take a while because we pretty much want them to cook most, all the way through because we're not sitting them in the... Um, Sauce for long, only like five minutes. Oh, Trish made the curry sausages with curry cauliflower puree. Nice. That's a good one. Olivia said, haven't decided yet. We're going to make eye oh, of the soup. Sorry, you read some of these. Manda, I can see your comments. Um, so I don't know. You're making harissa chicken. Sorry, this is the comments are jumping up and down a bit. Are we having cauliflower mash or rice with the meatball? We are having cauli roasted cauliflower. We did it with the butter chicken, and I really loved it. It was absolutely delicious. So okay. no, we are having cauliflower, but we are having just roasted cauliflower. One 
It just takes a step away from me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the lazy version. But it's pretty tasty. I like cauliflower roasted. I'm um, regretting going tight with the meatballs. I'll see if I can show fine. you. That'll I've just fine. given them a little flip over. Some are browning faster than others. The ones in the middle are browning quicker. Um, but we really just want to get them cooked and then we will add, make our sauce, which is the fun part, I'm assuming. We need a plate for the meatballs. So we're currently day three mm -hmm. of the reset. Um, I was feeling really good until the drive home today, about four, and I started to feel really hungry. And then I'm like, oh, my God, this is Monday night, late night dinner for us. Normally this is like it's quarter to six. We'd probably be finished. Um, so I'm having my broth, which is helping. We add some salt to it to also help. Oh, yes, Erica's I put pulling out our accountability calendar. So... I did my two ticks for yesterday and Saturday and Erica found a couple of cute little stickers just from some journal book or something that we have um, or diary or something, isn't it, um, as her little ticks. Oh, a whole bunch of comments just dropped in. Yeah, I don't think they're coming in as fast as normal. So... Oh, I don't even know where we're up to. Um, thanks, Elaine. You think I'm going to smash it? Um, yeah, that's about where we're up to. Oh, okay. Um, yes, Manda, I am left-handed. <laughs> um, Susan said, I wonder if you bung the lid on for a few minutes if they'll cook a tag quicker. They probably will. I might do that. Um, hi, Tribbles from... Buffalo, New York. I hate to think what time it is in New York. <laughs> Late. I'll just grab the lid. <laughs> Matt said, um, <laughs> Nigella, sorry, I mean Dan. <laughs> you're doing great. Hilarious. Make, making me hungry. Hilarious. Oh, Kim's hungry. Is you making everyone hungry? Bridget, raw maple. Having steak mm -hmm. and steamed veggies. Uh, so Mon said, with your reset, what meals did you have today? Yep, so I've had three meals. To, well, I'm about to have my third meal for the day. Um, for breakfast, I had the braised cabbage, which is kind of like a breakfast. I think we call it breakfast hash at one point, but it's braised cabbage in the clean and simple reset. It's just bacon, cabbage, much else. Salt and pepper, and I put a bit of broth in it as well. Yeah. It's like it's, I cooked it for a long time, like low and slow. It's delicious. And I just, so we cooked that yesterday, and then I just heated up a pan, put a little bit of that in there, um, made cracked three eggs. So that was my breakfast, three eggs in that hash. Um, and then uh, for lunch, I had leftover. Um, what was it? Salmon patties. Salmon patties with tartar sauce and pumpkin. pumpkin. And I had, I didn't have anything for breakfast. Well, I had my coffee with some gelatin in it. <laughs> I'm playing with gelatin. And then I had, for lunch, I had some of the leftover salmon patties and pumpkin with tartar sauce. And I added a boiled egg because there was only two little salmon patties left. And I love, I did a whole heap of boiled eggs in the thermo mix this morning. I love doing them in there and then just having them in the fridge makes life very easy. But Dan will probably have that cabbage with eggs. Most days. Um, I've got a lot of driving on my plate this week. I've got... Um, I'm up at the valley, uh, Hunter Valley, uh, the upper Hunter Valley from Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. I drive up to Denman 
Master Brook and Scone, and I used to stay up there because they're all reasonably close to each other. But with the Hunter Expressway, I can pretty much be home in an hour and a half except for Scone. So um, I, I prefer to come home, sleep in my own bed, have dinner here because if you're in a hotel, like it's just a drama, mm -hmm. um, you've got to take all your food with you. When I used to stay at the hotel in Denman, they um, put a microwave in there for me a long time ago and I would reheat just like we'd take, I'd take some stuff with me. So, um, but now I just drive home and um, just be prepared to have breakfast before I go. So this is the longest part, right? Like it's just going to take a little bit of time to um, cook these meatballs. Um, so the, the next step is we're going to cook the onion in the pan um, and then we'll make the sauce and then we'll be done. And I'm really looking forward to this. I'm hungry. I'll just check how the roasted cauliflower is going along. Oh, yeah, look at this, guys. You get the real little brown crispy bits on it. It's delicious. You might just need to chop it around with your face. So bossy. <laughs> There's a lot on that tray. Yeah. But I also put the glove on the <laughs> So definitely the ones in the middle are cooked, but the ones on the outside need just a little bit. Justin had black coffee the first time this morning. How, did, how was it, Justin? So I'm just moving some of these ones on the outside into the middle so that they get a little bit more. Yeah, it happens with that. With this element. element. Karen's having the chicken kebab bowl for dinner tonight and they loved it. Great. That's a good one. We should have that one again. A lot of the recipes are really, really good. <laughs> Suzanne had boiled eggs with garlic truffle mayo. Wow. I saw she made that. That I was sounds like, amazing. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's taking your mayo to the next level. We did a massive cook-up yesterday. Mm. We made a double batch of homemade mayo and then Erica split it up and made um, tarte sauce, which I think is gone. That was two meals. That was um, two meals. Yeah, two meals each. The salmon patties for dinner last night and the salmon patties for lunch today. And then she made this jalapeno mayo that um, she just roasted some jalapenos that we had in the fridge that needed to be used up. Mm -hmm. um, what else did you put in it? Coriander or something? garlic and coriander. Yeah, and it's spicy. It's a little bit too spicy. We actually used this in the salmon patties yeah. and that was nice. Yeah. Um, but... On its own, it's too spicy for me. And then she used the curry, so that bubbers that we used in the curry zucchini um, last week, she put in the mayo. With some and extra lemon juice. That's delicious, yeah. isn't it? That's really yummy. Yeah. And tomorrow night we're having steak. And so I made the green, the green salsa. And we will put that on the steak because that is absolutely actually told about delicious. Now, yes, we did have a question about the carbs in this Bubba's um, spice mix. I think per 100 grams it was something like 60 or 70 grams per carbs. Now, uh, per 100 grams. Now, that is quite normal for spices. So I know that we've all been taught at different times to think about, you know, keeping your carbs like under five per 100 grams. And that's a great rule in general. 
but it doesn't really work with spices because one, one, this one that probably a lot of people would get from the supermarket, there's no label. So I don't know how anyone's comparing them, I guess. Is that what you were? Yeah. Well, the other thing I was going to say is we tend to, with spices, be more concerned about the ingredients than the carb count because if you think about, you know, like let's say dried coriander, how much actual coriander has got to go in to make it dried coriander? So it's going to be quite concentrated in its carbs because all the liquid is removed. But you're using such a small amount. Um, so I wouldn't sweat the carb count in things like spice mixes and things, but I would focus on the ingredients. So I would want to see clean ingredients, no rice flour, no sugar, no fillers, like the mingle ones. The mingle ones have labels and they are high as well. Um, I think we might even have. So... They don't put the 100 grams on there, so that's how they get away with it. Um, but the, the, sachets, the sachets it is because yeah. it says zero grams, but you're only using a quarter of a teaspoon. A um, quarter so of a teaspoon? It's hard to... Um, Whereas this one has... So the meatballs are done. I will show you... Once I get them all out of the pan, I'm going to turn it down a little bit. So, yes, basically the moral to the story is dried herbs and spices do have carbs in them, I guess, Pete, because on the little master foods, you know, labels like this, it doesn't have it. So people aren't comparing them. But if you put that into, like, um, chronometer or something, then it would say... What? But, but there it all carbs. has carbs in it, but you're using a small amount across the whole recipe. At the same time, I will also say they're not free. So yeah. be aware of that when you're using them. Yeah. They do have carbs in them. So next up, onion goes in. So I've got one onion that Erica has diced up for me. Sliced. Sliced, diced. <laughs> We're coming over. She's done the hard work. Doing. Here's the meatballs. They look pretty good, right? So I need a, a spoon oh, there. she's already got all of it. See, the cooking part is the easy part, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we want all those juices that we've just released from the meatballs, all that beautiful crusty bit, that's all going to come off once we put the sauce in there. It's going to flavour our onions. It's going to flavour our sauce. It's going to be absolutely delicious. So this serves four, so we will have leftovers for... Um, lunch again tomorrow, I would say. So we just want to cook the onion, which will again take a few minutes. Thanks for the lid tip, Susan. So I thought I'd saw. Um, so Justin said he might try the green salsa. It's it's really like a fresh. Herb, crunchy. It's got lots of herbs and olive Chili, oil. Garlic, it's it's vinegar. really good. Yeah. Susan said, not self-righteous here. Still haven't mastered the black coffee. So I either chicken out and have tea or when I get my act together, make almond milk. Justin and Eleni, you are show-offs. Um, <laughs> Triple said it's 3.54 a.m. Oh, my goodness. I hope you have a good reason to be up. <laughs> um, Renee said, hi, Dan and Erica. I've started to add a squeeze of lemon with salt in the coffee. It's good. Lemon. Wow. Oh, we're getting crazy here, people. Um, Suzanne said, our batch cooking yesterday got her inspired to have the garlic truffle mayo, have a nice. go at the garlic truffle mayo. Annette drinks black coffee and tea. I've always drank black tea. Yeah, I was saying to Erica, I'm so... I've always drank black tea as well, which is weird, but I can't... The thought of black coffee is just like... No thanks. So <laughs> thankful I never sweetened my coffee, my, my tea, or drank it with milk. I've always drank it black, so I haven't had to adjust anything when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. So I'm super happy about that. 
Um, Renee said she's finding no sweetness so difficult, drinking lots and lots of water and tea to curb it. Have you any other tips for this? You kind of got to write it out. You're going to have some sweet cravings. Even if you've only been having sweetener, it definitely bumps up your cravings for sure. So you kind of got to write it out. Yeah. What I would say is if you feel hungry, snack instead of cave to something sweet. Yeah. So I know the goal is to not snack, but if you need to have a handful of macadamia nuts or um, some ham, some or, ham a or some egg. a boiled egg, have some boiled eggs on hand, have that. It's not going to, you know, dampen your sweet cravings, but it might just take the edge off the hunger that the sweet cravings is creating because I've got them now. I've, I, like I said, they started for me about 4 o'clock um, and I'm just writing it out because once I eat dinner, I and know I will be fine. Yeah. Well, some broth so even some snacking, snacking on some broth, maybe even try <laughs> some salt on your tongue because that might just, um, you know, you might just be also... Dehydrated. Dehydrated or something, so just try some water and some salt. Oh, these onions are going to be delicious, if I do say so myself. Smells, you know how cooking onions just smells absolutely it smells delicious? Like we're at That's what it smells like, Bunnings, Bunnings sausage sizzle in here. If you don't want to make your own broth, these are some good bought options that you could just add a teaspoon to some hot water, um, which could be a good little kind of get you Snack, Yeah, get you through, get you through that sweet craving. <laughs> but it'll be worth it because once you've gotten through that hump, you'll be amazed at how much less you're wanting sweet things. And right. that is, like, awesome. Write it out. Just really write it out. Um, Matt said he's making hemp seed pea and ham soup. I remember when you did that last year and you really raved about it. So that's a great option if you're looking at soups. We did a soup video that came out yesterday, so check that out as well. We have heaps of good soup recipes, laksa, chicken, creamy chicken soup, cauliflower, um, cauliflower and bacon. bacon. We have some really, really good ones. Um, hi, Jonathan. Welcome. Um, Jonathan said, more than one teaspoon of MCT in my coffee and I'm doomed. I'm assuming that means it runs right through you. That is um, quite a common thing that people will comment about. Okay. okay. Now, yeah, all well, the onions look really yeah. good, Dan. Onions look amazing. Mm -hmm. And that was because we got so much juicy bits off the um, meatballs. That looks... I think it's better than Erica's just saying. Wow. That is All right. right. Next up. That's very mean. We are going to add the curry powder and cook mm. for one minute, stirring to release the fragrance. So we need four to six teaspoons of curry powder. What do you want, Erica? More? Well, I mean, that one's different to, like, the supermarket one, so maybe, maybe go four. I'm also a bit heavy handed with my with your teaspoons. <laughs> um yeah, Justin suggested sparkling mineral water. Um that's a good idea. That's a good um even just with like some bit of lime juice or a bit of lemon juice. Oh yeah, good. Look at this colour. Do you want to show them that Erica? That looks so good. So that was four teaspoons of um, curry powder. I'm just going to cook that out for a little bit. But look at the colour on that now. That looks, oh, that curry powder is really, really, really good. So that was the Baba's one, the meat, I think it was goat or meat or something, meat well, curry, meat, meat meat curry, curry yeah. powder. We got it at the Asian supermarket. Um, but it's all clean ingredients. So I'm going to let that cook for a bit, but I'm just going to take oh, the it, yeah. um, lids off the um, tomatoes. So it takes a whole can of tomatoes, but it usually takes the small can of coconut yeah, cream. Sorry, but we bought, we bought the wrong coconut cream. We bought the big one. So <laughs> just check that this is 
Jonathan said, I like cooking, but I don't like washing. Yeah, well, is. yeah. I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm the same, so up. I don't wash up. I only cook. So now I'm going to have to wash up. That's what I don't like about Monday nights. Do you know what's been happening Monday nights? No. I'm <laughs> I'm and we don't normally <laughs> use the dishwasher. Cat <laughs> um, said, good morning from Dublin. The sauce looks really good. It smells really be. good. We need, like, Amazing. smelling. So we need 270 mils. Great measuring that out. Uh, Amanda said, have you tried the mingle curry in a hurry mix instead of just the curry? Yeah, we've tried the curry in a hurry mix. That's what, but we use it in a few of our recipes, actually. Um, it's good. It's quite probably a little bit mild for some people, but I think it's good, like a good family-friendly option. Like it's in our curry sausages, um, which people don't expect to be spicy. All right, we're going in with the sauce now. So in goes the coconut. Suzanne loves the Jeopardy bone broth. Yeah, it's really good, isn't it? Julie, for this recipe, yeah, you could use the mingle curry in a hurry for sure. And the diced tomatoes, and we'll give that a mix up. I've got you a little spatula there if you want to to scrape it. So bossy. <laughs> so what would you put in there? Coconut cream and tin tomatoes. Tin tomatoes, diced into tin tomatoes. Into the kind of onion yeah. and curry powder. Nice. So the coconut cream is what gives it the creaminess without using dairy. Dairy. Uh, Renee suggested chewing on a little slice of ginger instead of a lolly. Yeah, I've heard of someone else doing that. They actually said they cut it up into little pieces and, and, put it in the and freezer like, or something, wasn't it? Yeah, or dehyd. No, was it? Maybe it was like put it in, put the, in the freezer and that kind of dried it out. A little bit. I think I would find that too hot. Um, but yeah, if you're a ginger lover, that's a good idea. We could put ginger into like sparkling water as well. That would be nice. Um, Mon said, "Can you guys make a dessert next time?" No, <laughs> not, for, not while we're not doing the research. <laughs> uh, maybe in June. Dan, would you be up for a dessert? Like as well as a dinner? Or am I going to have to make dinner and then you'll make a dessert? <laughs> wow. This she has, can't even handle a side and a mate. This <laughs> has definitely come together. Let's have a look. Now, while Show I'm us. showing you that, I'm going to just check Ooh. these because I can smell it Ooh. burning. Ooh. Well, that's about where I want to No more than that. So oh. I'm just going to turn that off. I would just check... If they're cooked or not. She doesn't trust me. <laughs> just because some of the chunks were some big were pieces. Burning. Yeah, it was a bit chunky okay. when I. That was my I'm going to leave them in there so they'll cook a little bit more. But this is the sauce. Look at that. Right, that looks, looks really good. Looks absolutely amazing. So I'm just going to let that kind of come up. Now, On, I will tell you there's a couple of tips. We like to serve these meatballs with cauliflower mash or roasted cauliflower if we can't be bothered. We just steam some <laughs> cauliflower and then blend it in the food processor. Um, and these meatballs freeze well if you're looking for some make-ahead meal options. Um, I will say it says here, I'm sure I read somewhere that it said be careful. Uh, try not to let the heat get too hot or the coconut cream may separate. So I turned it down. Um, to make sure that it's not going to kind of separate. Um, I'll let it simmer a little bit and then I will put the meatballs back in for five minutes just so they can absorb some of the flavour. Do you feel like I've been confident with my, like, absorb the flavour? And... Oh, yeah, you total body Nigella, I tell you. <laughs> All that um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Kim, after the reset, we'll do a, we'll, we'll get her onto a dessert. Um, Julie loves the Jevity bone broth. She makes, adds it to Luxa or makes a Luxa with it. Nice. There's all different flavour ones as well. Um, Kim likes winter cooking. Does bone broth taste good? I've been afraid to try it and do it you drink it hot or cold. We make chicken because we prefer the flavour yeah. over beef. We don't like a strong beefy, bony kind of flavour. Um, but we do like chicken. So we just make chicken now. Um, 
because we use it in our cooking and we use it like just to drink. Um, it's mild in flavour, to be honest. It just tastes, doesn't taste strong chickeny, would you say? No. It and just we normally tastes savoury. We normally add a bit of salt to it to kind of give it a little bit more flavour. And it kind of depends what, if you put any seasonings in when you make it or, um, but yeah, I would definitely have it hot, not cold. Although oh, your mum. my mum makes bone broth and she like concentrates it down until it's like really, really thick and she makes it in and then she sets it in the fridge like a jelly and slices it and, and it. eats a slice of it. So, you know, you can you can do whatever level you like. We're not quite that hardcore. But your like, mum, My mum's though, pretty hardcore. She, like, I think she chooses things that she doesn't like to eat, like that aren't palatable to her because then she can't overeat them or something. Maybe. Uh, Jonathan said never understood the difference between coconut cream and coconut milk which one to use the coconut cream is just a little bit thicker and can have like a bit more of a hard top i know someone's been putting it in the fridge and letting it go quite hard and then using it more like a double cream um in my opinion, there's just more water in the coconut milk. Yeah, so I think maybe, I don't, I'm sure somebody knows who can tell us in the comments, but I thought that it was kind of like when they make it, the coconut cream is like the first kind of, when they grate up the coconut and sort of mix it with water, the coconut cream is like the first thing and then they do it again and the coconut milk is like, a more watered down right version. but yeah basically coconut cream has got more fat in it it's like it's tense if you put it in the fridge it will be solid like you could scoop it yeah yeah um but oh chris just did a super sticker we only just turned them on on the channel and i didn't know how it even worked so <laughs> thank you so much chris um i don't even <laughs> i'm trying to work out like how to show it <laughs> but Thank you very much. We really appreciate that. We just got an email be from YouTube before saying, if you're doing lives, you should turn on this feature. I'm like, what is that? I have no idea. Well, it's not like showing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It shows up here, but I don't know what. Oh, thank you. That's so cool. I'm, I'm so glad someone did it because I was like, I don't know how to explain what it is <laughs> if I'm supposed to tell people about it. And you can do a comment as well, apparently. Um, so this is almost a uh, Alani story. said borderline overconfident. Said I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm glad Alani said it. <laughs> I'm putting the meatball on crazy. <laughs> oh, that's a classic. <laughs> four, four cooks in and I'm master chef quality already. <laughs> Yeah, Julie, I don't know how she has the cold bone broth either. All right, um, so we'll just let these meatballs take on some flavour. It's quarter past six now, so we'll just sit them here till about 18 minutes past, something like that, 20 past. <laughs> Lola said, where's your apron? That's my apron, Lola. <laughs> she won't let me She'll get it, it all messy. <laughs> Linda said, spot on, coconut cream versus coconut milk. I've got the powder in the pantry. The difference is the concentration, right? So, yeah, coconut cream is just like richer, fattier. It depends what consistency you want for the recipe, I guess, because to me coconut milk is more the consistency of what we would like pouring cream if you were trying to replace that in a recipe whereas coconut cream might be too thick to replace that i can confirm it's not great cold i just took of the last
finding a spot to put them. Yeah. I got you these for your lunch. <laughs> Thank you. Can take it. Because Dan takes her lunch to work, we always get it ready when we're getting dinner and then it's done. Renee, where can you purchase the merch? That is a good question. On the website, on our website, havebuttablevetravel.com, up the top there's a shop section. If you click on shop, that will take you straight through to the um, merch. If you click on cookbooks, that will take you through to like our recipe books. So that's probably the best, quickest way to explain to get there. Amanda said, must say you're a very tidy cook. Good to see. You as a professional, a, as a professional chef, as my job, it's nice to see. Oh, so so I'm not practically a professional chef. <laughs> oh my chef. gosh. Please, Amanda. Also, she's not normally, I will say. I am. I'm tidy as oh. I go. My oh my god. god. Okay. This is gonna okay. end badly. I am gonna send a picture on the Facebook with Erica's clean. Actually, we should just ask your dad on camera. Oh <laughs> that's he, when I was like twelve or something. He just thinks you're the messiest cook ever. Yeah. That's like the only thing he remembers of you being a kid, I think. <laughs> a lot of cauliflower. <laughs> Uh, Julie said, grabs the Tupperware container and then immediately finds the lid. Whoever is able to do that? <laughs> well, we have a very good system here because we, do. we don't have a lot of space in this kitchen, which yes. we have mentioned before. So I don't know whether Eric can. That's our lid drawer. All the, um, they're not Tupperware, what are they? Pyrex. Have a lid in here and all of our Pyrex. Are in here, so we actually don't have that plastic cupboard that's just shoved full of everything, which is one good thing about this kitchen. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, this is thickening up now. If you want to kind of show what this looks like, for Erica. Um, Susan said, <clears throat> "Will witness Nigella blossom." But will she grow cocky? Watch your job, Erica. She might be after it. No, I can't create. I can only copy. So All right. Okay. Kat's well. teaching us about super. What Chris did is a super chat. Thank you. I think YouTubers tend to call out their super chats on their lives and draw attention to them. Well, thank you very much, Chris. We really appreciate it, um, even though we're still getting the hang of this. So sorry if we didn't acknowledge we're, it. We're still learning the live aspect of this. Um, <laughs> we are doing our absolute best. The lighting hasn't been the best today. Um, our camera setup is what it is. Um, we're just oh, doing... Dangela. <laughs> Come on, guys. We, we need another meltdown. This is going too well. I'm upping the ante on the recipe next week. It's going to be really complicated. Do you want to show what it looks like? I'm going to serve it up. Even bossing Erica around. Yeah, I know. This is great. I'm loving it. Look at this. Wow, it looks really that good. That looks so good. I am definitely. And how easy was that? That was super, super easy. And the and cauliflower was all ready to rumble. And it? even if. Like you're watching on the replay, I have said all of the ingredients and the amounts. So even if you don't have this recipe, I reckon you can cook it. Amanda said, "How I love how you guys chat together. How long have you been together? Sorry if that's off track. We have been together fifteen <laughs> years. So there's a lot in, of there's a lot of crap talked. There's a lot of crap talk in fifteen years. Um, in July, July sixteen is our anniversary, and um, and it'll be how long? Fifteen, 15 years. Crikey, that's scary, isn't it? That sort of shows how old we are. People often think we're younger than what we are. Oh, thank you so much, Justin. We really appreciate your super sticker. And Sylvia, you guys, that's crazy. <laughs> Thank you. I feel like embarrassed now. 
<laughs> Maybe I should turn that off. <laughs> we really appreciate your support. We really do. That's awesome. Thank you so much. So I've pretty um, much got 19 meatballs because there's five. Nine, oh, that'd be right. You couldn't get an even number. <laughs> yeah, 19 meatballs. So, <laughs> How many did the recipe say? 28. <laughs> Dangella's come down a few pegs. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I love about this is how saucy it is. I'm still dishing up sauce, but yeah, we did make it extra saucy because like, it's like, the, don't you hate it when there's not enough sauce? <laughs> Bronwyn said, "Looks amazing." Kim's looking forward to making them for her dinner a bit later. I mean, personally, I probably would have put them in that shallow bowls, but anyway, Danny, we're on a plate. Danny's making the, oh, sorry, that was my fault. Oh, I'm really letting the team down here with the old head chef. Um, Danny said she's making them tomorrow. Everyone's going to be, everyone in the reset's going to be making these tomorrow now. Well, Danny, I reckon you could definitely go with chicken mince. Um, yes, you could. For if sure. you wanted to. You may find them a little wetter, so you might just want to put a little bit more almond flour mm. or almond meal oh in God. them just to make... <laughs> <laughs> Cooking tips from you. You need to taste this so we can go and eat it. Here, taste. Uh, uh, taste. I'm trying to read what everyone's saying. Oh, wow. Okay. Did you, you need to take a photo? Nigella. I can't. Bang I'm on. trying to show you guys. I need to take. Sorry, Justin. I'm just going to take that. How do I get rid of that? Sylvia, I'm sorry. Well, I'm definitely not as a photographer. <laughs> wow, this looks so good, Dan. The roasted cauliflower looks really good as well. I'm so impressed. I love how saucy it is. You going to try it as well? No. Just me? Yeah. You're going to determine whether I beat the kitchen today. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Let's just... Spoiler alert. Someone is super confident today. We're definitely upping the ante in the recipe technical difficulty next week. I think you have to do a side as well as a like dish, not just roasted cauliflower. Mm. That sauce is so good. Yum. It doesn't even really taste coconutty to me. No. Which is a good thing. All right, mm. guys. I love the onion in it. That was us. Dangela <coughs> cooking the meatballs. And her trusty <laughs> assistant. All right. I am going to go. We're going to go and have our um, dinner. Thank you, everyone, who did that super sticker. I know, that was I know. amazing. We super appreciate it. Um, we just check those bottom comments. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to get down there. Well, I was just everyone saying, well done, Dangela. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. We will see you again next week. We will post a poll again. So if you want to challenge me, choose a hard one. Bye. Bye.